今天有跟大家。Very good thing that today、uh, we are、um, have an early day off for the cultivation for this、um, Dharma talks. Uh, Venerable say that、um, we are learning how to、uh, understand Buddhism. So hopefully through this、um, practice we would、uh, understand、uh, what、um, Shakyamuni Buddha. Um, has taught us all these years. If there's any、um, wrong points, please、um, give me any feedbacks.、Uh, because、um, they are、uh, like our youth group. Some of us do not、um, understand、uh, Mandarin,、uh, speak spoken Mandarin. So I'll take. A slower approach.、Uh, if it's too fast, uh, uh, it will be hard for the translator、uh, to catch up. So,、um, to、uh, have a better understanding to Buddhism,、um, we must、uh, know about the founder of Buddhism. We all know、uh, the founder of Buddhism is Shakyamuni Buddha.、Uh, he became our teacher in this life.、Uh, first, we must understand what his goal.、Uh, what is his um? His his um spirit. His um goal. His purpose of coming to this world、uh, from the Tushita heaven、uh, into India、uh, 2,500 years ago、uh, to give lay out the Dharma that we are hearing nowadays. Why did Venerable come to this world? I mean, why did the monk come,、uh, Buddha come to this world? If we do not understand.、Um, Properly about Buddhism, then we will not be interested. It's hard, or have confidence about Buddhism if we don't understand. Because in this world, there are too many religions, very complex.、Um, so we must have a, a, a proper understanding. Only then. We have confidence.、Uh, have a have a interest in Buddhism. This is a very important、uh, lesson. Otherwise, we would bring to Buddhism、uh, heavy misunderstanding、uh, ourselves or the world. We might thought Buddhism is、um, superstitious. That's the first thing we need to know. Also,、uh, in Shaimuni Buddha,、uh, he has been giving the,、uh, you know, the Dharma talk for forty-nine years. He's been educating us forty-nine years. He's actually Buddha actually also refers to the teacher of the heaven and the、uh, human realm. However,、uh, however, if you look at his life, he only has one attitude to all beings. One attitude. He serves all beings without asking for anything in return. And it's not just about the earthlings like us. It's all about. It's also about the whole. Um. What is it? The 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 beings from all universe, not just our little earth, but everywhere. Every species. Uh, so, no matter the religion,、uh, no matter what the faith is, your faith is, as long as you're willing to learn from Shaya Muni Buddha, then there will be、uh, he will be very happy to、uh, share with you his、uh, teachings. 
if you look at his history, look at his life, no matter the circumstances is favorable or adverse, adverse uh, he will persist uh, on sharing the Dharma teaching, no matter what happened, no matter what people treating him with respect or disdain. He treats them equally. He has no grudge. He has no regrets. That's the difference between us and Shai Muni Buddha and us. So why do we live such a... I mean, sometimes we bear quite a lot of a burden mentally and physically compared to what Buddha, you know, has shown to us how to live. Uh, no matter where or what uh, we're facing, we will feel uh, pain in any degrees, in any form. Uh, so what Buddha did, uh, his attitude towards life is always full of bliss, peace, joy. There's no pain in his um, divina, his state of mind. So here I would like to um, uh, remind everyone. So what is Buddhism? Buddhism is Shaimuni Buddha's uh, towards all beings, the most well-rounded and most encompassing education. We must understand about this phrase. Because besides Buddha taught us about morality, you know, what's the right and wrong, what should we do, uh, karma, cause and effect, uh, we also need to um, uh, also, uh, he also taught us uh, how do we live a happy life, uh, a fulfilling life. Uh, he also taught us the um, truth of the universe, you know. So, example, how did the universe come into being? How did life begin in this universe? Where did I come from? It's not, he didn't just perfectly answer everything logically in all aspects, but um, he also helped us how to become like him and not in a far, far future, in this lifetime. In this lifetime, to become like him with all that knowledge and all that wisdom. This is the contribution of Buddha and his Buddhism to, uh, to this world. Make it clear for us why are we having this thing happening to us? Why, where did this come from, and where are we going? A lot of uh, sutra in Buddhism, uh, uh, it can and it goes beyond as a teaching material for science, for philosophies, because there's no other what we call religion that has to be able to explain it so detailed, so systematic, so en encompassing from all dimensions of existence. So what is Buddhism? Just now we were actually reminding everyone what we have learned. So this is one of the revision. Um, revision. Buddhism, as you can see the quote, it's not a religion. It's not confined to philosophy, it's not confined to science, but it is encompassing all this, and, but more. So what does it educate about? What is the content of the education? And where do we begin with the educating? Where do we start? If we did not um, master these basics, understanding of the nature of Buddhist education, and we can't get interested, and we can't use it in our life. We can't um, understand what makes it unique and be respectful to about, about it. The most important of the all is So, education is what we need in this life. As this um, Mr. Arnold Joseph Tornby, Master Jinko has mentioned about him a lot. Uh, we cannot um, uh, 
leave Buddhism and prosper in the modern world. In this complex, multidimensional world, a very big world. So who gave this um, word, who gave this um, bold statement? Uh, Mr. Tonby, so his full name is Arnold Joseph Tonby. He's a British, true and true. Um, and his statement is quite bold for the time and quite visionary. In order to solve the social problems of 21st century, uh, modern, uh, modern times, there's only two teachings that can help. Mahayana Buddhism and Confucius teachings. He didn't mention any religion. But he's talking about uh, these two uh, schools of teachings. So Kong is Confucius, Mong is Mencius who learn from Confucius uh, through the book. So this Confucius teaching is the core of the Chinese civilization uh, as well as the East Asian civilization. Hmm. So now we are currently facing a crisis on a scale on a on a on a scale that we have never faced before in history of mankind because it's a globalized world. Mr. Tomby, uh, his background, he went through World War II. He has researched uh, because he has witnessed such a deadly conflict of human history. He started to understand, want to know why it caused such a huge um, conflict in human world. He researched on the physical side of it, like science. He looked at philosophy, he looked in everything, humanities, which is like histories and stuff. And he has, all throughout his lifetime, he has been putting all his work into investigating and studying the histories, human civilization, Greek, China, Egypt, etc. So as a British uh, renowned scholar, uh, uh, wish I can speak English uh, because I wish I can read his original work because he has a lot of very interesting um, view. I hope especially the youth group, uh, those young people, you can uh, comprehend English. So have a look on his work. Uh, one of his books is like a history of uh, civilization. <clears throat> so we cannot live, uh, we cannot survive without this society. We cannot survive without the group of people, uh, without you know, without the society, without the, the the proper society to function. So we can't run away from it. We have to solve it. In future, you might build a nice family, uh, or you have your own uh, way of living your life. Uh, it will. It actually helps by reading his work to give, put you in perspective. Uh, and uh, whatever he reported, it's not worldly in a way. It's, it's not ordinary. His insight is quite in depth. Why is it important? So he also added Stoneman, more education is needed for today's book. Why? Why did he add this sentence? If it's not serious, he won't put something like this there in his most um, successful work. He, he said that Confucius teaching, uh, Mahayana Buddha's te uh, Buddhism teaching can solve our problem. And then he added, more education is also important for today's world. <clears throat> he didn't mention any religion. He's been studying religion, he's been studying civilization throughout his life. But why did he choose Mahayana Buddhism? Because he, after throughout his study and his own experience in World War II, he has seen uh, the society has gone down a very misleading path. Uh, where did it go wrong? 
we must understand why do we walk on the wrong path? If one person walks on a different direction, what kind of uh, dangers would it cause? If an education who has um, gone through a, has, you know, the, 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 the compass, the goal of education is aiming for the wrong direction. Like, what do they try to educate is something that mislead people. Then what is the, what is the um, consequences of it? Why is it misleading? First, it talks about fame and financial incentives as number one. But all this education is just to get that. There is some case, it's very common like to have that mindset of, you know, uh, friends, only be your friends if I can gain something from it. That kind of mindset. Master Jin Kong also talk about uh, maximizing self-interest, you know, how to gain the most from this thing, for myself, or for my own group, something like that. It's always me, me, me. It's all about me. So that kind of mindset is very prevalent in uh, modern society. And it's causing harm towards people around them. That's, you know, because of maximizing um, self-interest, indulgence. Yeah, as we have mentioned, self-centered moral thinking emphasis on maximizing greed or you know anger or being ignorant of the reality. You know, think of social media and stuff, and also indulge in senses, pleasures, the flesh, pleasures of the senses, all senses. It's a misleading path because we're chasing our sight. So put in more common example, environment, external environment. Even the scientists, environmental scientists has mentioned uh, if we keep, you know, spending, keep, um, uh, how to say, exhausting the resource of the earth and, you know, creating trash because of consumption and all that. What's going to happen to the world? More trash, more um, warm climate because of emission in order to produce goods that we need to spend, uh, consume. The world will be destroyed eventually because it gets into you know, a very warm temperature. We can't live, we can't survive uh, to a stage where humanity can no longer stay on Earth. If the Earth is sick, uh, that means no food or less food, less nutritious food. It can't operate normally. The balance is upset. Can human live in this kind of environment? No. Everything will go on. Man-made as well, other than nature. If we do not change our, um, how to say, patent of thinking, behaviors as a, as a whole, how can we ever hope for a better outcome in the world? How many humans right now in, in today? How many human beings in this earth? Seven billion. Seventy point eight. I mean, seven point seven seven billion. Look at Australia, uh, such a big. It's a continent, right? As it was a country. We only have like two hundred million something. 
将近要八十亿人，那个人类很多哎。那人这么多，信仰中。We are actually approaching eight billion within a decade or something. So among this population of humankind, how many people in there among them,、uh, you know, practice religion, practice faith? There are lots of world religion in the world. How many of the human being,、uh, humankind, actually practicing it? Ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent practice this faith. There's only five percent、uh, claim themselves as atheists. With this amount of people who have faith in any religions, why do we still have this、um, chaos still happening? So people will look at what did what was religion trying to teach, and is it really working? It's supposed to bring you know like a universal brotherhood,、uh, supposed to purify it, or at least you know give you a moral upbringing. But why is the world still going down this dangerous path you know, of destruction of、uh, environmentally and humankind as well? This is what Thomas、uh, Arnold Toynbee、uh, has mentioned in one of his work.、Uh, religion has diverted away from its core. Purposed,、uh, this in his word, the essence of religion has been、um, diverted away from the essence of the of the religion, the point of religion. Everyone focused on the exteriors of religion, on the ceremonial part of it, on the fleshy part of it.、Uh, everyone's like, "Oh,、well, what do you believe in? I believe in God. I believe in Christian. I believe in Buddhism." And when you ask them in depth. Like, why do you believe it? Some people can't even answer it. Why do you believe in、uh, Catholicism? It's like,、uh, as long as I believe in God, that's fine.、Mm. That's it. As long as,、uh, because if we believe in God, we can go to heaven. That's it. Is it just that?、Uh, in our case, like. Uh, why do you believe in Buddhism? Ah,、uh, I chant Amitabha for I can go to pure land. Is it that simple? But think about it. If we chant Amitabha with that mindset, do we actually have Amitabha in our heart when we chant it, or we just chant for the sake of chanting? Or reading the sutra? If we just simply reading the sutra, ah,、uh, do we? And、do we learn the spirit? Do we do we get something out of the sutra? Like learn something out of the sutra? It's the attitude. That's the reason why a lot. I mean, modern world has such a strong、um, antipathy or even、um, opposing view on the religion because everything is becoming superficial. Including chanting Amitabha. If we chant with without our heart being sincere and being pure,、uh, no matter how long we chant Amitabha, it's not going to work. It's not fulfill what Amitabha Buddha teach. So it's not just are not torn be.、Uh, if you don't even ah,、uh, sorry, but I missed it. Oh, human and human.、Uh, let's not talk about this big thing. Like just among individuals, communities,、uh, is the world safer? Are we feeling safer living in modern society? Back in、uh, my rumbo shows, um, Chaukut, he has a very safe neighborhood where he doesn't have to lock the door. He can just leave it open. No one will come in and steal stuff. Human and human has that warmth amongst them. So I'm saying everyone's up here, more、um, simple and more happier back then. You know, less guarded, less fear.、Uh, in the other hand, if we look at modern or current day Australia,、uh, like you lock your door, right? We we go out. 
and there are cases where um, they are protecting the thief rather than the victims of the theft, right? When the thief come, there's a law when the thief come into the your room, break into your room or your house, your property, even if they stole your stuff, you are not supposed to hit them. You're not supposed to uh, 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 pro uh, commit violence or in def uh, against them, uh, like in defense. So there is a joke that uh, one of the uh, one of the um, you know uh, uh, Dharma friends, brothers and sisters come. Uh, I went to their house and you know there is a theft in their property in their home, and I um I uh, and then say yeah if the old does not go the new doesn't come. So what else can we do? You know? So in, in, in summary, people are getting more uh, fearful, more guardful against one another, more suspicious against one another. Even within a family unit, there are some with doubts against each other, integrity against of each other. So even a family, you know, one family unit has this thing happen. Uh, think about the country, think about the world. There is no reason the world is not unstable, the world is not in chaos. There's no reason because everyone's guarded against each other, not trusting each other. So where did the world came from, the countries? Where did the countries came from, the family? Where, what is the family, core of the family, husband and wife, father and mother, educations? So if the family education is not there, uh, it passed down to children, and they are living in a very unstable family, divorcing and all that, arguments or even violence, domestic violence, etc. How can they be a good person? This is always this is happening like a bread and butter already in, in more uh, current news, current day. Is that not a strong enough proof that the modern education has already gone down a misleading path? So if we want to learn to be a good human beings, let's continue on the next part, on the next slide. So how do we do it? Where do we get started? Right, since we desperately need education, right? And Buddhism is an education. We start from... It's, good, it's a good question to ask ourselves. Buddha told us we start from ourselves. We begin from ourselves. No others. No any nothing else. Ourselves. Not asking for others to conform to the teaching or not. No. We're asking ourselves to conform to the teaching. Only when if we ask ourselves, change ourselves, reform ourselves, then we will we be able to influence the people around us, our dear family friends, colleagues. If you can influence the people around you, there's a community. And the community with a good influence towards the other community, it becomes a nation, a whole nation that influence another nation. Then the world will be a better place. So this is what the ancient uh, Chinese scholar has always, Confucian scholar has always been saying. If you want to have world peace, peace in nation, and you start with your family. The family unit has to be solid, tight, trusting, warmth. Why is it so important? I'm very happy. Why? Do we start from ourselves? Today I heard someone who chant Amitofo during the group chanting session with us. Very hard. Uh, very happy. We see people joining this session uh, because this is also a group where a lot of uh, people has regularly come to chant. So it's good to have this understanding, this thinking to improve our confidence.
Look at Sai Muni Buddha. He already showed it to us how to educate. Start with self educate. If, if he can't do it, how can he convince or influence everyone? Think about it. Why are we still chanting his name as original teacher until now, 2,500 years later? Because he has set up a very good example. Only when you are stable, only when you are um, steady in, in accordance with the teaching, the path, only then you have the wisdom, the confidence to help others. Let's continue. Buddha has been teaching for 49 years. He has expounded 84 thousand methods of gaining enlightenment. It's a figure of speech. It's in a lot, infinite. Everything he taught, what is it all about? It's about our heart. It's like our being, us as beings, all beings, sentient beings, our mentality has the issues. Mm. Therefore, we are living in such a painful or uh, afflictive uh, world environment, mental environment, physical environment. Mm. Not just the body, but also our heart. So we're not only sick in physical form, but mentally ill as well, in a sense. So Buddha does not turn around, twist and turn the corner. He directly sit there and say, the reason, the cause is you have illness, you have illness, you all have illness. He don't, he don't be around the bush. He just point out the problem straight away. You have some illness. The question is, do you agree? Do you agree you have afflictions? Other than physical one, not, not, not back sore or anything. I'm talking about the mental, the attitudes. Uh, this is um, actually the most interesting part of practicing Buddhism. It's a lot of time, it's all about asking ourselves, have I done right? Am I doing it wrong? Am I you know, afflicted with the heart disease, with the disease of the mind? So that's the point, right? But a lot of people do not acknowledge it. Why, like, I'm not... I'm not sick. I'm healthy. Why? Why? Why do we say that? Why did Buddha say that? We all have mental afflictions. What kind of affliction? What kind of sickness? How serious is the sickness? If, for example, if we're having a flu, uh, uh, you, you should take a rest. Uh, if you have some sore or any body parts, they are not health, um, not feeling well. <clears throat> take a seat, you know, rest. Go and see a doctor. Get the, you know, prescriptions so that you can buy the medicine from pharmacist, and then you get better as you rest. Same for Buddha. He's a doctor. He knows what happens to us. Uh, so what kind of affliction? We have greed. Do you have greed? A lot of uh, young people like us, I want to live a comfortable life. You know, less effort, maximum satisfaction. I want to buy a good car. I want to find someone that I can uh, live with for the rest of my life. Someone I like. Or I want someone handsome. Uh, I want a beautiful woman. Example for this, etc. etc. There's always these desires, always there. There's always this form of greed over there. Buddha told us 
with a lot of metaphor about greed. And all is about telling us if we do not let go of greed, our life will be very hard, but full of burdens. For example, when I, I have a teacher, uh, I have a teacher uh, when I become a monk, my old, uh, first teacher, I always go back to the mountain and see him. Uh, my teacher always told me what the sentient being need, what do they need is not a lot. What do they want is a lot. Therefore, that's why they live in such a burdenful life. You know? If we can reduce our desires for things or peoples, then our life will be much more free, more contentful, more blissful. If not, today I want something like this, tomorrow I want something like this, the day after I want something even more. It, it will never end. Uh, I say? This is an illness, my friend. But tr when you think about it, yeah, I mean, endless desires, bottomless desires. In this world, it's common. However, if we think about it, this greed has been used on the wrong end. What kind of consequences it will lead to us? On the wrong platform. Therefore, a lot of people say, some people say, what's the cause of greed? I mean, what's the consequence of greed? The three lower realms. Now, affliction number two, hatred and anger. So the second disease he point out, common in everyone, anger. Right? If not hatred, anger. Um, a lot of grudge. How does anger happen? Grudge. For example, everyone's learning uh, the Chan Amitofo. Uh, now we currently have the uh, event where we all, you know, uh, Chan Amitofo dedicated together to Master Jingko. But think about that. If you're being angry, even have a thought of anger, you burn away all that merits that you have been accumulated during your cultivation. Yes. Think about the historical figure, uh, Emperor Liang of Wu. Um, Emperor Wu of Liang, sorry, the Liang Dynasty. He was one of the biggest, most famous um, Buddha protector, uh, Dharma protector in, in human realm, as in he has uh, 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 helped a lot of monks propagate the Buddhism. But he's He's supposedly, his fortune should be very good, but he died in a very sad way because of karma. What's his karma? Arrogance. He's very arrogant. And anger. He's very huge, bad temple. He asked uh, Bodhidharma, the first teacher of the Zen school in you know, Chinese Buddhism, he taught, he showed off in front of Bodhidharma, Master Bodhidharma. Hey, um, I have, you know, donated millions and millions to all the temples. I have, you know, um, helped a lot of monk, you know, people to become a monk and propagate Buddhism. Do I have fortunes? You know, how big is my fortunes? How big is my merits? <laughs> Bodhidharma replied with one word. He, he, he replied one thing, nothing. You have no merit. And he got pissed, very angry. So think about what he actually did. He actually helped, you know, build, uh, build, build the Buddha statue to propagate Buddhism. He actually has a lot of fortune. Uh, by doing that, according to Sutra, he actually can enjoy the pleasures of the desire heaven. In the, in the heaven in desire realm, the first, the lower realm of the lower heavens. So in the sense that he has a huge fortune. However, what Bodhidharma said, you have no merits. <laughs> and then he's not happy, right? Because, you know, I did so many things, you say I have nothing. And then he followed with a question and he said, 
is that Buddha in this world? And then, you know, Bodhidharma is a master of Zen and he speaks in a way beyond the comprehension. So, it's like, I, there's no Buddha. There is Buddha, but there's no Buddha. Something like that um, in, the, in the riddle. And he, he got furious. So he doesn't care about him. And, you know, uh, treat him coldly. So not, not, not helping him to propagate. So this is one of his weakness. It's affliction. So we also have ignorance. So many things we don't know. Most importantly, we are selfish. We have a degree of selfishness in every one of us. So because of this affliction, we are helpless in our emotions, in our behavior. We get um, dragged away. And this, when it explodes, it hurts the path of middle. Mm. Because our emotion and behavior are getting up and down, left and right, we are not on the equilibrium. We can't live in the equilibrium. So in Confucius, it's called doctrine of mean. Put in simple words, very few people can settle down to see themselves clearly away from all this busyness, all these desires. Very few can see the beauty of their own inner world in comparison to the external world. Everyone thought everything I want is outside. No, in fact, the most beautiful part about you is inside, the inner beauty, the inner world. Or heart. What should we do? Knowing this. If you want to explore our inner world, you need to have a path to go into it. You need to have a proper teaching to guide you to explore the power, the, the beauty of your inner world. Without proper Dharma, proper teaching, you can't get into that. For a modern Buddhist teacher, a uh, uh, practitioner, we must have a clear understanding of Buddhism. Now we have learned what is Buddha. Mm. Think about what is Buddha. Anyone knows? What does it mean by Buddha? By the word Buddha? Buddha is a person who discover the universe truth, the truth of the universe. He's not a creator. He does not create the truth. The truth is there. You don't need to create it. This is one thing we need to know. Unlike most religions, uh, common like the world religion, a lot of religion are usually defined by having a God, a Allah, someone who create everything, the creator of all. Even in Chinese folk religion, traditional religion, uh, they always use the term of God as well to describe it. So in all human history of all civilization, we always have a very strong connection with a strong um, God-based, God-centered uh, teachings. Uh, as the, uh, like Christianity went to China in the late 1800s, uh, something like that. They always have that doctrine of there's only one God and one God. Monotheism. Uh, and they attribute everything, all that, you know, difficult questions to that one God, that one person. Without 
you know, proper logic and everything. So what Buddha say is that Buddha did not say he created anything. He discovered how the universe came into being, an observation. It's just that we can't, it's too deep and we can't see it. We can't see the beings of universe and how all this karma cause and effect happens. So this is where his, the truth in his teaching we call Buddhism came from. It's just we can't access it. A lot of questions like, is, does Buddha come first or does the Dharma come before the Buddha? Or does the Sangha come before the Buddha? It's just like chicken or egg question. Chicken came from egg, but where did the egg came from? From chicken. So which one is number one? Which one is number two? What's the origin point? If you ask all that very difficult question, it does not depart from this point. Where did it come from? What's number one? So what is the truth? It's a very Zen session, guys. Today there is a lay Buddhist called me, but his cousin passed away, I think. Because, you know, loved ones pass away, he invoked him to ask this question, why does human beings have to die? Why do we have to separate from our loved ones? Why do we have to get sickness? Why do we have to die? Why do we have to separate from each other? These are very close to our heart. These are questions that are very close to our heart. And Buddha has mentioned that and explained that thoroughly in his teachings. If we can comprehend it, permeate it, all this cloud of doubts, then we will let go of the attachments. We will not be attached. 2,500 years ago, Shaimuda Buddha told us, human will have sickness, age, death, as they have birth. No one can change it. That's the iron rule for human existence. This is the truth. 2,500 years ago, 2,500 years after, it remains the same. No one can change these rules. Because of this truth, reality, that's why you have Amitabha Buddha in his, you know, when he started practicing, he has this strong vow to create something that surpasses these four realities sight of our human life, which is called pure land. So when Buddha told us all this, are we awakened to his teaching? Have we learned his insight? Therefore, my respectful dear uh, practitioners, this is Buddha's teaching. All they are teaching about is about this. First, we must be enlightened, fully awakened about our life, about human life. This four heart fast, iron heart truth. If we can overcome these four realities, as long as you can do that, if you cultivate and attain this level, we call Nirvana, then you have solved the problem, the first, first part of the problem. All of them is talking about this. What is the cosmological view? What's the, what's the view of Buddha on cosmology, on the world? What's the world view of Buddha? How did he explain the truth to us? Such vast truth. 
So how did he get started? Wait for <laughs> you all. You all will be told in next episode. <laughs> Stay tuned to the next episode. Yeah, I got a word, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> Recently, uh, we have my venerable uh, myself venerable has uh, been have a lot of um session dharma session talk about the Di Zhang Jing, the City Gaba Sutra. So today I'm just giving a very uh, uh, basic, simple introduction to Buddhism, his goal, his vision, his direction that he wants to lead us to and want us to lead ourselves to. What is the essence of Buddhism education? And where did I get started? Where did we Buddha started? Where, where, where does the Buddhist education start? We know that we start from ourselves, a person, could truly comprehend Buddhism, Buddha's teaching. The benefit of doing so is hard to describe. Not just to ourselves, to our family, to our life. It improves a lot if we truly put in effort to learn it. Leave it. Next week, I will uh, explain in depth Shayamuni Buddha, how the Buddha explained this universal truth to the world. What are the concepts he used to explain to us, especially to the scholars like us, people who like to think like us. It helps us as a beginner of Buddhist path. To, uh, it's a very helpful tool for us to get better in walking this path. So hopefully I can see you again next week. Explore this together, analyze this together, how to understand Buddhism. Today, uh, tonight, uh, that's it. If there is anything I uh, mentioned wrong, please uh, uh, be kind. Uh, please give me some feedback. Thank you very much, Amito, for uh, <laughs> Uh, if uh, if you, no one's listening to my teaching, how can I improve my teaching? Right? Thank you very much for giving me a chance. It's very hard to have this opportunity. Let us uh, dedicate the merit. Xiao 下个星期礼拜三，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，感恩，阿弥陀佛。